All right, so I'm here at uh, Value Village with my new friend Layla. Leia. Leia. I'm Star sorry. Wars. Leia. All right, I'm here at Value Village with Leia, which actually, when I first came to Kamloops, I had only the clothes on my back, so I ended up at Value Village myself to get some clothes because I shipped all my clothes via courier, which took four weeks. So I love Value Village and I love thrift shopping. I used to wear a lot, but you are a master. Just looking <laughs> at what you're wearing right now, it's obvious that uh, you have a very um, defined sense of style and uh, a look that you're going for. And I hope that you can kind of show me what you look for when you're thrift shopping for what I understand is a vintage clothing store you have online. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. Well. I always love asking people too, what's your first style you go for? Everyone has something they're always searching for. Like, what's the first spot you hit? What's we, the one spot you want to check first? I love denim and finding vintage denim is such a treasure hunt. So that is always the first place I hit no matter what. And I'm very specific with what I'm looking for. So sometimes I don't even need to touch the, touch what I'm looking at to move each item. I just need to look at it. I can tell what kind of denim I'm looking for right away, whether it's that or not. So sometimes I just kind of slowly creep behind the aisles and take a look at what I see. All right, so let's, uh, let's start looking, I guess. And what are we going to keep our eyes out for? So I'm looking for high-waist denim all the time. They kind of stick out a little further than the rest of them because they rise a lot higher. Um, and it'll be a thick denim with a worn-out edge of some sort that'll maybe look a little whiter. The, the mom jeans. You betcha. <laughs> exactly. Your classic 90s, 80s mom jeans. So they are a little bit far and few between in Valley Village, so it's even more of a treasure hunt, which is more exciting when you find something. <laughs> okay, so if, if you weren't looking here, where else around town are you looking? Oh, we have so many great places in Kamloops. People don't even realize. We have them popping up all the time even. One of my favorite new ones is even a great cause that I love and support is the SPCA one downtown. It's right next to the Noble Pig there. It is amazing. They have very, very cool household vintage items as well. Very household neat stuff. Household vintage items. So your yes. decor. Yes, you betcha. There's some very cool things to be found in there. So that is my new favorite one. There's another one down near Seymour Street called Simply the Best. It looks like a little house. They have everything from clothes to um, electronic items, which they test themselves even. So I've never personally had a fail there, to be honest. Yeah, that, was, that one has just stuff overflowing off oh, of yeah. the... It's, it's, it's almost like walking into uh, a museum in a way. It's just overflowing and bursting with funny trinkets and, and items and uh, fanny packs hanging from the ceiling. Oh yeah, experiencing itself. It's very fun too. If you can squish in there and take a peek through their little aisles, it's very cool. You can find some treasures in there for sure. <laughs> now, with uh, with your business online, is it mostly what you envision, or, or do you have people asking you to create certain looks for them? Do you have clients that you're shopping for? I definitely get a lot of both. Uh, I definitely get people asking me, hey, I'm looking for this while you're out shopping. If you ever notice it, like, let me know. I'd love to like pick it up from you if you could find it for me. Some people don't have time to search. Some people don't know where to search. Um, they know I'm always out and about looking. I actually have a lot of requests that come from the United States too. Uh, vintage is cheap to buy online via Canadian prices. And sometimes we have sources that they don't have down there and it's quite expensive. So I definitely get people asking me from there a lot, which is cool. And then I get to connect with even more neat people from all over the world. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's fabulous that you're you're building a clientele and a, and, a, and a base. And it sounds like you're also building your own website or are in the process of building your yes. website. Um, you know. Where did you start? Where did this all begin? Have you been doing this for years, months, weeks? I have been doing it a while, but not so publicly in Kamloops. Definitely took some courage to get to that point. Um, I started when I was traveling abroad and I was just looking for an extra way to make some money. So I started going up to the markets at 6 a.m. with all the locals and the trucks bring in these giant piles of clothes, which funny enough come from the United States and Canada. So I get to go through all those things with them and it became quite a fun little process and they would always help me out. They know what I'm looking for, they'd throw jeans at me and I'd start bringing them back down to my home and I'd cut them up and take them around to the hostels that I was working at and sell them to all of the tourists and all of the backpackers and they all thought it was so neat and they were so supportive and great and it ended up being a lot more successful than I thought. And when I first moved home it was 
really intimidating to do something like that here. I don't know why, but it just felt a little different to come home and do it. So it took me a bit and a lot of encouragement from my friends to get to the point I'm at now. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you definitely have a, a group surrounding you. You often have other people modeling your, your work. Uh, you've worked with Miguel Ports on some photo shoots, great guy. You know, how is the campus community kind of coming up and, and supporting you in, in this really artistic endeavor of seeing uh, the beauty and, and what other people have not discarded, but have chosen to pass on? Yes, I love how you said that. Um, Camus has amazed me. I, I mean, I never thought that I would get the support that I've gotten from Kamloops ever. Um, even spoke with Jesse Fobert about this and sometimes you go to other places searching for things and then you come back home and you find it here. <laughs> and the people here are incredible. I was offered by Studio 322 to be in a, a pop-up market over the holidays. That was absolutely incredible. So honored to be a part of that. They reached out to me and I got to meet so many amazing people through it. I've had photographers and models in Kamloops reach out to me. Uh, my friends have been incredibly supportive. So I've met some of the most amazing people in Kamloops through this that I never would have met otherwise. And I find that it makes my social media feel more positive because of all these positive connections and positive vibes that I get from all these people. I never feel negative ne negatively towards it unless it's my own you know, self-consciousness you get sometimes, but it's always wiped away by all these amazing people. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's tough of being artistic and putting something out there because it's, it's an extension of you. It makes you vulnerable, Yes. right? And, and, and you're working in, in a medium or a, an industry that Sometimes isn't always receptive <laughs> Indeed. to uh, kind of interesting stuff. But we're at this point where obviously people can express who they are, right? So we have some interesting musicians who are definitely off the, the wall at this point. But as someone who might, you know, be, well, someone who is currently wearing khakis and a, <laughs> and a button up, right? Though it is tie dyed. Yes. You know, <laughs> how do you talk to someone or, or, or guide someone in creating their own uh, style like where, where, where do you start if, if someone comes to you asking for fashion advice? Uh, what makes you comfortable first of all because you never want to be uncomfortable your style is what makes you feel comfortable so I would always start with that what are you most comfortable in and then go from there and like you are wearing something tie-dyed maybe somebody made that maybe their I made that. colors were chosen <laughs> right you choose it specifically for yourself and I think it's like a canvas you paint them right and I think that's another way to add like extra flair and creativity to something you've chosen and I love I love stuff like that. I think that we have so many cool things in Camelot that open doors to go wear those crazy things. There are events and places where that gives you a little more chance to show off your flair a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you beat me to the to Valley Village, so you already have a full cart with you. A few things, yes. Yeah, you might. It was mind so hard to wait. Going through what what you have and kind of what caught your eye or what what you imagines the outfit that you're going to use it for. So, winter has been daunting and cold, and I've decided to prepare for summer <laughs> and think about warmer times. So I've been looking for denim to make into shorts. I get a lot of requests for shorts that I make. So today I scored a nice pair of Wranglers. Good quality, old school mom jean denim yes and i have one other pair as well a nevada brand again the old school mom jean look um and i have one personal score today from the shoe section wow those are those are something else you can't <laughs> see it but maybe we'll, we'll ask uh leia to to send a picture so we can share they are it looks like someone took their grandmother's couch and married made a pair of heels yes they're very inspiring i I, I couldn't I couldn't leave them on the shelf <laughs> and so as, as you're building this all and and whatnot your your house describe what your home looks like your closet uh, at what point do you say I can't bring anything more home my boyfriend um, he is very patient with me so shout out to him for being great we have dedicated our spare room to my things <laughs> um, and my sewing machines <laughs> Um, but yes, my house is a mixture of vintage and thrifted items and the one room is exploding with projects, which I can't wait to share with everybody. <laughs> so you're, you're sewing as well. You're not, you're not just buying and, and repurposing. You're doing some sewing stuff 
what, what's your background in sewing? Do you make your own clothes as well? Or are you saying strictly in uh, reduce, reuse, recycle? Mostly the reduce, reuse, recycle. A lot of the vintage and old things that I like to buy have holes in them already and have tears or stains. So I'll add more stains and bleach to them or I'll cut them up, make them into a patch, sew them onto something else. There's always a way to make something into something else again. Um, you know, your favorite old band tee that you can't stop wearing. Put it on the back of a denim jacket and you can have it forever. There's different ways that you can keep it. Make it into a blanket. There's so many different things, you know. So I have boxes and bins full of projects and things I'm working on and personal requests for people as well. Okay, and if you're, if for some reason, all your clothes disappear tomorrow and you can only keep three items, you know, what are you going to be trying to keep or what is your, your three essentials to your wardrobe? Well, if I had to pick three things, I would keep um, my boots, made in Canada, Good <laughs> favorite classic pair I've blue. ever scored. No, no, not blue, black boots. Just black biker boots, um, definitely one of my vintage denim pieces, like my jeans. Um, and one of my favorite band t-shirts, I have a Rolling Stones um, band tee from the 80s. Whole tour on the back. I could never part with that one. <laughs> and to, we're getting close to the end here, but Layla, your, your Instagram handles the Naked Gypsy. Where did that come from? Because obviously you're working do, dealing <laughs> in clothes, so you're, you're clothing people. I get so many questions about this. It's so funny. Some people say it's what attracted them to my page. Some people just are so curious where it comes from. Um, it was inspired by the name of a business my friend had in Guatemala for a restaurant, nonetheless. I just was inspired by the rawness of it and just, you know, the start of creation and where I was at the time was very spiritual and connected to the earth and... I feel like what I'm trying to do is to save it by reduce and reusing and you know everything I buy too I buy from other people who do exactly what I do or thrift stores so I'm really trying to make a difference with my footprint and I hope that that message comes through in some of the things that I'm trying to create. Yeah totally it's uh there's some interesting podcasts by Planet Money about actually the the clothing industry and, and where it ends up and and what we end up here in the stores actually the the good stuff and the bad stuff they they end up shipping overseas and that that's a whole interesting uh topic on itself where they they do modify the clothes as well um to fit their needs which is where you get some of the interesting oh how did that person end up wearing that shirt that doesn't make sense do they know what they're wearing but you know it's really inspiring to see what you've done and, and as someone who has been thrifting um i many times in, in the past but haven't yet because I have too many clothes and <laughs> at this point um, you know what are some parting words that you just want to share with people who who are maybe a little bit cautious about getting into because there's, there's always that little bit sense of can I can I do this can I can I can I stand out you know how can I get over that hump of, of being concerned what people think when you're wearing what you like because my wife uh, hates my tie-dye shirts <laughs> I just think you have to not think about what people think you know be proud of who you are it's good to be different and I think it's important to be different and important to speak who you are and doing that with your clothing is a really cool way to do it and you may meet a friend by doing so yeah totally <laughs> and in the end everyone has to put clothes on because we can't all be naked gypsies running around campus. this is true <laughs> yeah so make sure you're wearing some clothes well Lila where Leah, Leah, Leah. No Leah. worries. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the extra H just throws me off. <laughs> where Where can people find you um, online? Instagram, the whole works. How so can they check out your stuff? I'm Naked Gypsy on Instagram. For now, I'm working on my website as fast as I can. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm doing everything just based off there. I've done a lot of direct sales through the beginning that way as well. So I appreciate everyone's support. <laughs> yeah, and uh, definitely make sure you check out her next blog post or Instagram post because she's got uh, a whole host of people supporting her in, in this venture and it's be awesome to have even more people so thank you for, for chatting with me and uh, let's uh, continue our, our thrift shop adventure and maybe maybe find those high-waisted mom jeans we're looking for <laughs> thank you so much